Welcome to our Comte A Plus study series. Today we are diving into the different types of motherboards. Before we dive in different types of motherboards, here's a quick explainer on what motherboard is and why you even need the motherboard on your PC or computer. A motherboard also known as main board or system board. So motherboard can be referred in three ways. Motherboard, main board or system board is the central hub of a computer. It connects and allows communication between all critical components of the system such as CPUs, RAM, storage devices and peripherals. Motherboard in essence is the foundation of your computer housing essential circuits, slots and connectors that enable your hardware components to work together. The motherboard determines what kind of components your system can support from processors to expansion cards and dictates the overall performance and upgrade potential of your computer. So motherboard is the board, main board or system board which connects all parts of your PC together and allows them to work together. That is the main purpose of the motherboard. Now let's look at the different types of motherboards and their specific use cases. But before we get started it's important to know that the types of processors you choose will directly impact your motherboard choice. There are two main processor manufacturers, Intel and AMD. Intel processors are known for their strong single core performance making them great for gaming and general tasks. They are typically a bit more expensive especially at the higher end but they offer a wide range of options for both budget and high performance systems. AMD on the other hand tends to offer better multi-core performance which makes their processors great for tasks like video editing, 3D rendering and heavy multitasking. AMD processors are generally more cost effective offering great value for the price especially in mid-range and high performance builds. Understanding whether you will be using an Intel or AMD processor is essential when selecting your motherboard as each brand has specific motherboard chipsets designed to work with their processors. And another important thing to mention about motherboards is that whenever you will be buying motherboard you will be buying it without RAM, without CPU, without storage as motherboard is mainly just for connecting these things together and you will have to buy these all parts for your PC separately. And now let's dive in the different types of motherboards. First let's talk about ATX motherboard. This is the most common type and is widely used in desktop computers. Measuring 305 by 244 millimeters, ATX motherboards offer plenty of space for variety of components. They usually include several PCIe slots and graphics cards, RAM slots and numerous connectors for peripherals like USB and Ethernet. The ATX is known for its versatility making it compatible with a broad range of cases and components, whether you are building a gaming rig or work PC. Next we have the Micro ATX. ATX motherboard. This is the smaller version of the ATX motherboard measuring 244 by 244 millimeters. It is a popular choice for budget builds or compact systems offering a balance between functionality and space saving. While it has fewer PCIe and RAM slots than an ATX, it still supports multiple expansions, making it a great option for users who want a solid, affordable motherboard without sacrificing too much performance. Then there is a mini ATX motherboard. This is the smallest standard form factor, measuring just 170 by 170 millimeters. Mini ATX motherboards are perfect for compact and portable builds, such as small form factor PCs or home theater systems. They have fewer expansion slots and connectors, but their small size makes them ideal for light spaces. If you are looking to build a powerful PC that doesn't take up much room, a mini ITX motherboard is a solid choice. Just be mindful of the more limited expandability. Next one is Nano ITX motherboard. The Nano ITX motherboard is compact, measuring just 120 by 120 millimeters designed for small efficient systems it's commonly found in embedded applications such as smart TVs digital signage and other specialized devices. Its compact size limits extendability but it's perfect for systems where space and energy efficiency are key. 
The Pico ATX is even smaller than Nano ATX with dimensions of 100 by 72 mm. This is ultra compact motherboard is often used in embedded systems, industrial PCs and other space constrained devices. Despite its small size, it can support modern processors, but its limited real estate means fewer expansion options, making it ideal for extremely compact setups. Moving on to the E ATX motherboard. The E-ATX or Extended ATX is larger than the standard ATX measuring 305 by 330 mm. It's designed for high performance systems offering extra space for more components such as multiple GPUs, extra RAM and additional storage options. E-ATX motherboards are often found in high-end gaming rigs and professional workstations where performance and expandability are key. Finally, let's talk about the XL ATX motherboard. Even larger than E-ATX, the XL ATX motherboard measures 345 by 262 mm. These motherboards provide ample room for the additional components like extensive cooling systems, multiple GPUs, use and high-end storage solutions. XL ATX boards are commonly used in extreme gaming setups or professional environments that require maximum performance and extendability. And now let's dive in into laptop motherboards. Laptops use a type of motherboard that is specifically designed for compact and portable devices, often referred to as laptop motherboard or notebook motherboard. These motherboards are smaller and more customized compared to desktop motherboards, with components integrated into the board to save space and enhance efficiency. Here is a breakdown of what makes a laptop motherboard unique. And key features of laptop motherboard are compact size and custom layout, which includes laptop motherboards are typically much smaller than desktop motherboards. They are designed to fit into the light confines of a laptop chassis, often custom made for a specific laptop model. Unlike desktop motherboards, which follow standard form factor like ATX or Micro ATX which we previewed just a second ago, a laptop motherboards have unique shapes and sizes to match the design of the laptop. As many components on the laptop motherboard are soldered directly onto the board, meaning they cannot be easily upgraded or replaced like it is with desktop motherboards. This includes the CPU, central processing unit, GPU, graphics processing unit, and sometimes even a RAM can be integrated into the laptop laptop motherboard. Due to space constraints, laptops often have integrated graphics rather than a dedicated GPU, unless it's a high-end gaming or workstation laptop. Laptop motherboards are designed for energy efficiency to maximize battery life. They use components that consume less power compared to their desktop counterparts. And laptops also have a fewer expansion options. Unlike desktop motherboards, which have several slots for expansion cards like PCIe, E slots, laptop motherboards have very limited or no expandability. Some might offer small slots for additional RAM or storage upgrades, but this is much more limited than in a desktop system. And also, laptop motherboards feature specialized connectors for laptop components like the display through a ribbon cable keyboard, trackpad and internal battery. These connections are unique to laptops and are not found on a desktop motherboard. Due to limited space and compact design, laptop motherboards are paired with specialized cooling solutions like heat pipes and small fans to manage heat in a confined space. And here are the common laptop motherboard types. Unlike the desktop motherboards which follow standard form factor, laptop motherboards vary in design and size depending on the manufacturer like Dell. HP, Apple, etc. models. However, they generally fall into two categories. Standard laptop motherboards, used in general purpose laptops where portability, power efficiency and cost are key considerations, and gaming and high performance laptop motherboards. These motherboards are larger and feature more powerful components like dedicated GPUs and advanced cooling systems used in gaming laptops and workstations. In summary, a laptop motherboards are custom built for specific laptop models, emphasizing compactness, 
integration and energy efficiency with fewer options for upgrades compared to desktops. And now let's discuss mobile phone motherboards. Mobile phones use a specialized type of motherboard called System on Chip or SOC SOC. Unlike traditional PC motherboards, which house the separate components like the CPU, GPU, RAM and storage, an SOC or SOC integrates all of these essential components into a single chip to save space and improve efficiency. This allows mobile devices to be more compact and power efficient while still delivering high performance. Here is a break down of what the SOC or SOC in a mobile phone typically includes CPU central processing unit the brain of the device that handles general processing tasks GPU or graphics processing unit which manages graphics rendering crucial for gaming and visual applications RAM random access memory provides temporary storage for quick access to frequently used data and apps storage flash memory stores the operating system apps and data modem allows the phone to connect to cellular networks and talking about other components the SOC can also integrate Wi-Fi Bluetooth GPS and more all on a single chip this compact design of mobile device motherboards or socks is crucial for mobile phones because it minimizes power consumption and allows the device to be thin and lightweight while still packaging enough processing power for modern applications and multitasking. And there you have it, each type offers different advantages depending on your needs, whether it's a compact build, budget friendly system or a high performance machine. Choosing the right motherboard is a key to building a system that meets your requirements. And if you want to watch all series of CompTIA Plus study materials, find the link to all playlists in description. Thanks for watching.